What's going on guys? Today we are going to take a look at the stroke panel inside of Affinity Publisher, Designer and Photo as the stroke panel works the exact same way across all three of those applications. So if we take a look at the screen in front of us, you can see that I've got four different objects inside of my canvas, one being the text at the top here, underneath that I have a shape, over to the right I have an image, then underneath that I have this line. And these are going to be used to show you that you can apply a stroke to any objects that you bring inside of your canvas. So to get started, I'll select this text at the top here and I'm going to make my way over to the right hand side inside of all of our studio panels. And the studio panel that we want to choose is going to be the stroke. And inside of here is where you're going to find all of the different features and functions that are going to affect your stroke around your object. So starting towards the top here, we have the width. And when we adjust the width over to the right hand side, that's going to make our stroke a little bit bigger. And as we pull it back over to the left, that's going to make that smaller. Alternatively, we can make our way over to the right hand side inside of this little box right here. And we can type in any number that we like if you want to manually assign your width. So just above our width option, we have this style menu right there where we can go ahead and turn our stroke on and off with this circle with a cross. So if I go ahead and I select that, that is going to remove our stroke. And to bring that back, all we've got to do is adjust that width once again. Then next to our little circle with our X in the middle, we have a couple of line options. One being a solid line, which is what we have right now. And next to that on the right hand side, we have the option to choose to a dash line. As you can see, we now have dashes around our design or our text. And we'll talk about how we can adjust these dashes in just a moment. But moving on with the tutorial, I'm going to go back to that solid line while we talk about the rest of these features. So underneath our width, we have the option to change the cap. And this is going to affect our dashes or down here on the end of our line where we've got that rounded corner. So once again, we'll talk about the cap in just a moment. But underneath that, we have our join option. And what I'm going to do is just zoom in a little bit so you guys can see this better and just make my way up to the top of this text. So what the join is going to do is either is going to straighten up our corners like we've got here right now. So that's going to be a straight mitre join. Or alternatively, we have the option to curve our corner, which we can do just over here on the left hand side. We can choose that round join. And now you can see that it's just changed up from being straight to a rounded join on the corners. Alternatively, we can choose the section in the middle, which is going to be a bevel join which in some cases can look really good on your design. So the choice is yours whether you want the rounded corners or the beveled or whether you want the straight mitre join. Then underneath that we have the align option which is going to be where you would like to align your stroke on your design. At the moment this is set in the center of our design or our text. So what this means with having our stroke aligned to the center of our text is when we go ahead and we adjust the size of this, it's going to get bigger on the inside of the letter as well as on the outside. So I'll go ahead and just make that a little bit bigger so we can see. So you can see that the stroke is pulling in on the inside of the letter as well as pushing out on the outside of the letter. So if I go ahead and I bring that back in and we go ahead and we change that to a different option, maybe a line stroke to the inside. Then when we go and adjust that stroke, you can see it's getting a little bit bigger on the inside of the letter. However, it's not affecting the outside. So if I go ahead and put that back to normal and then we go ahead and choose that final option, which is going to be the align stroke to the outside, that's going to do the opposite to the inside. And that's now going to start adjusting our stroke on the outside of our letter. So if we start adjusting that width, you can see how that works. So this is really just a case of you guys choosing the kind of one that you would like to use inside of your design. So the order is to determine whether you want to put your stroke either behind or in front of your object. At the moment, this is set as in front of our letters, but we can go ahead and move that to behind. So this is really personal preference of what you guys would like to use. Then over to the right hand side of that, we have the option to scale with object. What this means is when we start scaling any of our objects, if we have this unchecked, then as we get a little bit smaller with our text, you can see that the stroke itself does not change size. So what can happen here, it could end up ruining your design. So to avoid that happening, what you want to do is make sure that you turn on scale with object. Then once we go ahead and resize that text once again, you can now see that the stroke itself is getting smaller as the text gets smaller too. So I always recommend that you guys have scale with object checked if you decide that you want to rescale any of your objects at any time. 
Okay, so moving on, we'll just quickly show you that we can also apply any stroke to any other object, such as the image right here or the shape. So it started with the shape, we've got the exact same options. All you got to do is adjust your width and you've got all the same settings that we just used on the text. So the only difference is one is text and one is a shape and it's the same principle with the image. We can go ahead and select that and add the width on there as well to apply the stroke. Once again, if you want to change the color, just go back to your color wheel and choose something a little bit different. Then head back to your stroke menu. So with our line at the bottom here, this is where we're now going to talk about our dash options when we go ahead and change to a dash line. So if we go and we swap that over now from our solid line to the dash, and this is now where we're going to talk about our cap settings and how we can adjust all of our dashes inside of our line. So at the moment, we can see that we have these oval shapes that are going to make up our line. And that is because with our cap, we have these rounded caps selected. And if you want to go ahead and change that to be something different, all we've got to do is select the one in the middle, which is going to be that butt cap. And that is going to create all of these squares right here, which has even space in between them. And we can adjust all of this space and with these settings down here inside of the dash menu. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. So next to that, we have the other option, which is going to be a square cap. At the moment, this will turn that back into a straight line. However, we can adjust all that inside of the dash settings as well. So just to move on with the tutorial, I'll go back to using the butt cap. And now we'll have a look at some of these other options that we have available inside of this section right here. So we have a start and an end point. And what we can do inside of this is put either an arrow or a different shape at the start and the end of this line. So on the start right here, I'll just put this arrow. Then on the end, I'll put something a little bit different, maybe that circle. And then just to the right hand side of that, we have these options that says place arrow within the line or the one next to it says place arrow at the end of the line. So at the moment, this says within the line. So if we pay attention over to the left hand side, we can now see that this arrow here is within the line and the end point is that node right there. If you want to go ahead and change that over to outside, then you can see now that the line actually ends right here with that node. However, the arrow itself ends all the way over here. So therefore that is outside of the line. Then underneath that, we have this option right here, which is going to rotate it around. So the arrow will be on the other side and the circle will be on the left hand side. So you have the option to keep swapping back or forward. Okay, so finally underneath that, we have this dash option. Whereas this is gonna be kind of trial and error. You're gonna to have to play around with all these numbers to get what you are looking for. But you can find if we just adjust a few of these, you're gonna get a different kind of effect. And there really is no magic number to get this perfect. It really is a case of just trying all different numbers and combinations just to get the kind of thing that you are going for. And like I said before, if we go ahead and we select that square cap again, then now we have the option to adjust that as well. If we put that back to all ones, that'll be a flat line like we had originally. And then we go ahead and start changing these numbers just to break that up. And just one more thing I want to talk about before I end this tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this back to a solid line once again, because inside of this menu now we have this option down here that says pressure. If we open up this pressure option, what we can do inside of here is we can make one side of the line thinner than the other. And the way that we can do that is by dragging down these nodes that we have inside of our pressure menu. At the moment, these are linked together. So when I start pulling this down, it's going to evenly start adjusting that arrow. So I'll bring that all the way back up. However, if you hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard and you start dragging down the left hand side, you can see that one side of the arrow is getting a lot more narrow than the other. And you can create all different kinds of curves in here to give us a different effect. So if I create another point in the middle here and I drag that all the way up to the top and then I drag the one on the right hand side down, then it's going to get thinner at the both ends and in the middle it's going to get a little bit thicker. And you can create as many points in here as you like and really start messing around with that to get the kind of effect that you would like. Alternatively, if you don't like what you created, just go ahead and hit that reset button right there. Then that will take that back to how you originally started. So that is it for today's tutorial. I hope you liked it and you've learned something new and I will see you in the next one.